Hello, this is Queen the Greatest, in which we celebrate some of Queen's most memorable songs, performances and achievements from their remarkable career. In the early years, Queen understandably worked hard to make headway in the UK and USA markets. However, there was another country that had already started to take the band to their hearts, signalling the beginning of a deep bond that endures to this very day. And so this week, let's take a look at the extraordinary story of Queen in Japan. As early as 1974, in Japan, Music Life magazine had started to feature pictures of the band and report on their albums. The style of music and stage show struck an immediate chord, and so in April 1975, Queen embarked on an eight-night tour in Japan. Their very first concert on Japanese soil would be at the world-famous Budokan in Tokyo, and it's fair to say the band had no idea what was in store for them. Japan really caught on to us fairly early on. Queen too, I think, was the big yeah. one they picked up. Yeah. Really, wasn't it? Mm. And we knew that there was a sort of demand for us there. And so we sort of tagged it on to the end of an American tour. We had a holiday in Hawaii and then it was sort of logical. So we went there mm. and I we arrived it's... at the airport and suddenly realised it was on a scale different to that which we'd imagined because mm. there were thousands of people there just to, to welcome us, you know, and normally you just don't get that sort of thing anyway. In this exclusive interview, Record company exec, promoter and long-term friend of Queen, Kaz Utsunomaya, recalls that extraordinary arrival. I don't think anyone really guessed that 3,000 people would turn up at Haneda Airport. Anyone who, who turned up at the airport would think that this is like the second coming of the Beatles. Some of the people were really scary, you know, like scared to death because they didn't really kind of like expect anything like that, I think. You know, in those days, I think it's just, they say, the rock band was mainly supported by the male audience. And then the fact that music life put on Queen's picture suddenly opened up the whole new world with the female fans. And with their great melody and songs, caught the Japanese fans in both gender, male and female. This first encounter marked the beginning of a deep bond between Queen and Japan, with each leaving a lasting impression on the other. So much so that it inspired Brian May to write a song as a special tribute to their Japanese fans, Teo Toriate. You know, he was sort of like, say, mutual respect from the day one, I think, from the Japanese fans to the, the band and band's fascination to Japan. I think their great songs really helped to get into the Japanese heart. They never expected the band to come up with songs like Teo Toriate, which is mainly for the Japanese market. Because of the history with the Japanese fans, I think it's to say the band has all different songs all over the world. But I think Teo Toriate, you can only listen to them doing that in Japan, I think. Queen would regularly tour Japan right up until 1985, but as Kaz explains, the band always embraced a unique approach to where they performed. Every tour was a bit very different, because in earlier days, it's just to say, we toured all different cities all over Japan. So, you know, we would go to Sapporo in, in Hokkaido, which is the northern part of Japan, and we would sort of like go to Sendai and southern part of Japan and then it was like really interesting that there's not that many bands that used to tour all around Japan. A lot of international bands that come to Japan, they go to Tokyo and Osaka, right? Rarely have a chance to see 
the culture outside Tokyo, which disbanded dead from very early days, from the day one. And a lot of people never had that chance of seeing the international band in those kind of like cities outside Tokyo and Osaka, which they did, and they were big in Japan. So, which made them bigger and a very unique, I think, international act in Japan. And, you know, I said this again, but I think that also helped the band understand the Japanese culture, Japanese history, and, and sort of like meeting Japanese fans. In the next Queen the Greatest, we continue our celebration of Queen in Japan and the album release that ensured this mutual appreciation continues to this very day. Buddy, you're a boy, make a big noise, playing in the street, gonna be a big man someday. You got mud on your face, you big disgrace, kicking your can all over the place, singing, We are.